Okay, very good. We'll move then to item 3.5, update on activities related to the Stonewall Jackson Training School property. All right. Um, Jared Poe is going to join me in just a moment and, and run through a, a web application, and I'll explain how that plays a part in this. But uh, I think it was about two weeks ago, Commissioner Morris asked me, did I think that this project was going to take this long? Um, I would tell you that um, at the time, I knew it was a complicated project. There were a lot of agencies, particularly state agencies involved, um, environmental issues, historic issues, property issues, and I thought it was going to take a while. I did not think it would be this complex and take this long. So I did want to give you an update. You're familiar with the study report um, and the fact that the state has declared most of this surplus property. Um, they have actually taken two parcels off of Old Charlotte Road, found a buyer. I don't believe either of those have transferred. The last time I checked with the state property office, they had not, but they have gone through the upset bid process and there will be a buyer for those parcels. Those are separate, zoned residential, and most likely would be developed for infill development, which is, which is a good thing, of course, for the Old Charlotte Road area, which you're seeing some redevelopment in that area, which is very nice. Um, and of course, there was a legislation that um, discuss transferring portions of this property to the county and ultimately and most importantly I think that what spurred this was um, the transfer of Frank List Park and the soccer complex to the county rather than us continuing the lease as well as the transfer of the historic area of Stonewall Jackson so that we in turn with Preservation North Carolina can look for a private party to come in and redevelop that parcel. Um, so you have authorized a boundary survey which has been completed, um, cleanup of select buildings, which has also been completed, and now our grounds maintenance division has been keeping that up. We've had, as you can imagine, blackberries and um, poison ivy are our biggest challenges. Those have been sprayed a couple times in the last couple of weeks. But in addition to that, we have um, taken that boundary survey and have proposed new property lines for the park and soccer complex that was easy but there was some additional land that the state has talked about transferring to us so we found some natural boundaries to to create a larger park eventually and also gives us the opportunity for some different access points um, there is a parcel that would be divided out for the public television tower a parcel of course divided out for the detention and training facility including some in some of the old buildings the historic buildings would need to stay with that because of their operations even extending up to the old barns on the northern part of the property um, and then there would be the historic property itself and then of course the area for the public safety training facility um, in addition to all that there will need to be easements for access because the training facility itself has driveways that go through what will be transferred as the historic parcels. Um, they also have utilities that go through there. Same way with public television, they will have a, a road going through. And then in addition, they have a protected area around that tower. Um, and in, when there are certain climatic conditions, particularly if it's cool at the ground but not freezing, it can be freezing as you go through the, the the column with the tower that high and there can be um, the potential for falling ice so there are some areas around that that will also create easements so on your agenda as part of this will be an item that will go forward to your it will be the only part of this that goes forward to your regular meeting and that is um, a second proposal from Conquin engineering and surveying to go out and um, complete the new property lines as proposed and all the different groups have agreed to that um, Still working through some conditions on that one with the um, with all the different property owners or all the future property owners beyond the easements. The detention facility wants some buffer areas. Um, there is some participation that the Department of Public Safety, as we discussed in our initial kickoff meeting, would like in the public safety training facility. So we're working through a lot of little issues that go along with that. But concentrating on the, the historic area, um, we have defined what would be the property that can be transferred that does include the gym and the swimming pool, as well as the Swink Benson Industrial Building. Those are very close to the fence line, but they, as state properties are, and state historic in particular have looked at it, feel like those are key components that should transfer with the historic properties and will make it attractive for someone redeveloping it. Um, State Historic has been working with some of the, or has proposed some of the 
covenants and restrictions that we'll need to pass along with the historic property, so that's ongoing. Um, the Natural Heritage Inventory Office has been and looked at the rare plant colonies as well as the stone outcroppings that's part of the Concord Ring Dyke, and they have proposed a protected area for that. Those really go along with the rock outcroppings. They're not areas that we think would be developed anyway, so I think it, it preserves those natural heritage inventory areas, but it's not an area that really pulls away from the redevelopment. Um, we have proposed where the fence would be relocated, and the state's intention is still to um, compensate us for the surveying work that has been done and will be done, as well as use the proceeds from the sale of those properties on Old Charlotte Road to pay for the fence relocation, because there will be a, a portion of that where the secure fence needs to be relocated. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we were um, contacted. Kyle has done a lot of work with the UNC Charlotte College of Engineering. Um, one of the professors he works with there has contacted us about the idea of doing some architectural mapping of the buildings. And we feel like, particularly with the cottages, because those cottages are consistent throughout, that it would be really helpful to have that architectural mapping done. Um, we're still not able to allow people in the buildings as a restriction from the state, um, even with their engineers having looked at it, but they feel like they have a way that they can, um, through remote access, map some of the in interior and actually create architectural grade drawings of those cottages, which of course would be useful as someone's looking to redevelop it, we can pass those plans along to that person or that group doing the redevelopment. And then beyond that, they have some drone technology that they're able to use to fly over all the buildings and do a further assessment of the conditions of all the buildings, um, whether there is roof damage and then how much roof damage there is. And, and that's, again, something that we'll be able to pass along to, to everyone, anyone who is interested. So really, our next steps are to complete that, um, the property division and finalize those property, ex those property exchanges. Um, I have reached out for this, to the state multiple times about when we can expect, for instance, the park and soccer complex to transfer. That has been approved, but at this point they have not completed the deed, so we, we hope that that is coming soon, and, and they know that I am waiting to, at any day to hear from them that that is ready to go um, as a first step, and then beyond that to complete the transfer of the public safety training facility. And although I, at first I think I told you that I felt like it'd be best if we received the historic area and were ready to pass it along to someone proposing to redevelop it, I think for a number of reasons we will receive that and, be, and hold that property while we accept proposals and then bring them forward to you. Um, I did want to go through or have Jared go through this web application. You need to bring your chair. So the, the concept of this web application is, um, because I don't see us just putting this out and saying proposals are due on this date, it's, it's going to be a very complicated project. There's a lot of background to it. I think we're going to have more parties that are interested and in, in beginning to look at it and we'll, we'll want to go through all the different information we've compiled. So this is Jared Poe. I'll let him introduce himself and, and it's, I will get the division name wrong, but <laughs> he is an ITS. Um, he works in GIS and, and with these web applications. But the idea is to put this together as a project page so that someone who's interested in this, and it may just be someone in the public who's interested, it may be one of the paranormal investigators who's contacted me, and there have been a lot of those. <laughs> um, it, there's been television and movies that want to shoot out there, all of which, we, unfortunately, we've had to deny because of the conditions. but. This is somewhere for even just the average citizen to go in and, and go back and look at the historical <clears throat> moments that was done um, on, this on this property and get some of the background history. It allows people to look at the mapping. Um, we, will, we can add anything and everything to it. So what he's going to do is run through some of these tabs and talk about some of the information that will be available for people to go on and, and find in this. And then finally, we will have a frequently asked questions section so that if one person who's interested has a question, they can submit that to us, we'll answer it, and everybody will get that information. Yes, yeah, so my name is Jared Poe, and I'm a GIS analyst on the uh, Business Location Innovative Services team. Um, work under Joe Battinelli, Mark Landon, and um, a few other people as well. But this is, the, this is the site here that we're working on. 
Um, like Jonathan said, we want to have kind of an endpoint for, for where people can kind of get some overview and history of the site as well as what's going on with the site. If there are common questions that are popping up uh, regarding it, we'd like to include those on the site um, as well as any updated data we have. So this is just a um, the about page here with some overview and history of the site as well as some images. We have that historical moments video um, that was mentioned. If, if you scroll down a little bit here, um, this is a video um, that Jonathan and uh, members from UNC Charlotte shot uh, with the July 2021 kind of update of what's going on um, on the property. And you can see an image of the chapel there as well. And if you scroll down, there's some quick links to the different things we're working on. Um, so you can, for instance, if you want to take a look at the mapping projects um, that are going on so far, it's a little bit bare bones at the moment, just uh, until we get more data up. Um, but we have some, uh, you can kind of see the training site, just a um, overview of that. And this is created through ArcGIS Online, is where this data is um, hosted. And then we have kind of a county vicinity map as well. And then that boundary survey map with some of the CAD data. Um, scroll in a little bit just to see it there. But um, yep, so we have that on that site. And then um, this needs to be updated a little bit more, but we have the history of the, of the training site as well. And then some images and videos that are gonna be posted online. Uh, we have some contacts here, uh, people who are gonna be working on the project and then the FAQ page, not, not anything there yet, but once we get some more information for that. Um, so just kind of an endpoint for information on the project, if, and if anyone has any questions, of course, just let me know. And the, all those tabs have a quick link down here. Having a little bit of trouble loading, but um, should have quick links down here where you can access any of them, as well as the environmental um, some of the environmental information there. And that's what we have so far. So as he said, Jonathan Weaver has also been, I've been out there a couple of times with him and he's been able to go out there on his own from the communications and outreach. So he's continued to do some filming out there. I will note that when you, when you get a chance and we'll send these links out to you, or the link out to you so you can look at it more closely, um, you'll see, for instance, the College of Engineering folks um, as we walked around and talked about it with them and they talked about what they could offer to us and, and I should have said that that is all free which is great because they have students who learn the professors get to try new technology and we benefit from the product um, so you'll see us walking around you will see some things where it looks like we've been in the building we did step foot in the entrance of one of the buildings but no further I will make a point of that to the state and there's also a disclaimer at the end asking that um, reminding people they are not allowed to go in the building. Unfortunately, we have heard from Peter Brown, who's the administrator there, that they continue to have problems with trespassing. Um, the last time we were there, a deputy pulled up, I think, to make sure that we were supposed to be there, um, saw our badges, and just kind of kept an eye on us. Um, I talked to Captain Taylor this afternoon, and they are going to step up their patrols out there because they've had some vandalism even within the last week. And, and you've been out there, and you've seen the fences, the, the places where they're cut continue. There's places where those have gotten wider. It does not look like the church is being, the chapel is being accessed as much. There are some pictures on that video inside, but those were all from someone hoisting a camera up and looking through the windows. We did not go in the church, but again, we are we are keeping to the state's request that we not go in the buildings. Um, eventually someone will need to, and that's why the engineering assessment is done, and, and they will, um, we will come up with some standards for them to have an engineering assessment, as well as, of course, the, the liability insurance necessary, but people will need to go in those buildings to assess them for us to get proposals on it. Um, but if you look at that, you're, it's gonna look like we went in, we did poke our head in the front of the King's Daughter's Cottage, but. I don't t usually go too far into those buildings. <laughs> so certainly if you have any questions or, or need more information, I'd be happy to answer them or we can or you can reach out to me after this if, if there's other things you need to know. Just a quick question, Jonathan, for the future development of those properties there, mm -hmm. whoever the developer is. I'm assuming they'll have available to them the North Carolina uh, State Historic Tax Credits? 
they more than will. likely. So Brett Sturm and Renee Gledhill Early, both with State Historic Properties, have been very actively involved in this. Um, one of the things that's gotten a little complicated is because we're not transferring the entire district, they want to make sure that um, if we're with, and we're transferring the majority of it, but they want to make sure that because it is a smaller, it isn't the entire district that those tax credits are fully available. So they've been investigating that. Um, they they believe they are, but they're just double checking. Well, that's good, and I hope that the state historic tax credit stays around for a while because that has helped, particularly Concord already, with a couple of the old historic buildings that otherwise would just be there dilapidating more and more each day. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, if they're gonna be able to get those tax credits, that'll just further um, you know, their need or help them get it done quicker yeah. by getting the tax credits. So I'm glad to see that's gonna be a part of it. They have also suggested that we do some additional inventory of the site. Um, State Historic Properties have. Um, there are some grants available for that, but it would require that the property be annexed into the city of Concord, which um, I think is a, a I have discussed it on on one level with staff. I think it's more probably at the manager level with Mike and, and Lloyd Payne to discuss, but um, Concord is designated because of their historic commission that they can receive these grants, so the money would need to pass through Concord to do it, and it would need to be in the city for that purpose. And, of course, um, that's ultimately a consideration as you look at potential property taxes, not for us, but for someone buying it from us. Other questions for Jonathan? Well, this is really exciting, and uh, you, you've done a tremendous job on, on the web page. Um, I hope people will take advantage of that, and certainly the historical moments mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, episode about Jackson Training School. Um, David Baxter made me about 20 copies of that on mm -hmm. thumb drives, which I took to Raleigh and distributed to our various representatives there to, to, to help create interest uh, in this project. Uh, so we certainly appreciate it is obvious that you're putting a lot of time and work into it. And uh, I think this is a classic example of uh, elected officials coming up with a project and saying, oh, that would be nice, and then create a huge amount of work for you. <clears throat> but uh, I think it will be worth it. Uh, in the in the long run, I think it'll it'll save those properties. I think it'll get them back on the tax books, uh, contribute into our local economy, and it is a not to mention the advantages mm -hmm. for our for our park, Franklin's Park. Exactly, and, and the public safety training facility. Right. I, I think the interest in what I've heard from citizens calling me is tremendous. I mean, people are really excited that something is happening. As you can imagine, it's a very intriguing site to people. Um, who have passed it, cleaning that bridge off, the footbridge, has really attracted the attention we expected it to. Um, and then in addition, um, for instance, the operate, owners, operators of Allegiant Coffee right there, which is a redevelopment um, in that area, or, had contacted me, and people are excited about the redevelopment of Old Charlotte Road and those communities around it. We're starting to see infill housing built there. I just think there's a lot of things happening, and this will contribute to it. Yes, excellent. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.